Right. Thank you. In the last class, just I was briefing you about this big data Hadoop and PySpark. So Hadoop is meant for two things. Hadoop is meant for two things. Hadoop provides two services. Storage is meant for storage and processing. Any technology, they are either meant for storage or processing. Hadoop is meant for both storage and processing. For storage, we are using a HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System. And for processing, we are going with the MapReduce or Spark. MapReduce previously used a lot, but now currently most mostly used is Spark, the tool like by Spark. So you may get some queries, right? Like uh, when Hadoop is performing both storage and processing, then what is the necessity of the current storage and processing technologies? Means you've got some storage technologies like a storage, like a Oracle, MySQL, DB2, SQL Server. And for processing, we got C, C++, Java, .NET, all this. Do you think when Hadoop is able to perform both storing and processing? Do you think they'll be away from the market? No. You know, to clearly understand Hadoop is for Hadoop is for batch processing. Hadoop is for batch applications. Hadoop is for batch applications or batch processing. Millions and trillions of records. Hadoop is for processing millions and trillions of records for a single transaction. For a single record or for a single transaction, Hadoop is not required. Hadoop is for batch applications. Means what do you mean by batch applications? Hadoop is not for online applications. Clearly I'm saying Hadoop is not for online applications. There are two types of applications. There are two types of applications, right? First one, online applications. Online applications. Secondly, batch applications. Online applications. Secondly, like batch applications. Applications means user interactive applications, user interactive applications, right? Here, here user gives the input, here user gives the input. Gives the input. User gives the input. For example, online applications example making a online money payment making a making a online money payment compulsory user is required to provide the source and destination
user interactive applications user user gives the input making your online payment second like uh, for example booking a movie ticket booking a movie ticket making online payment booking a movie ticket and for example railway ticketing pnr status <laughs> Railway ticketing PNR status. <clears throat> Making online payment, booking a movie ticket, railway ticketing PNR. Railway ticketing P. Okay. This one you cannot say this. It's not in the online application, it comes in the back application. So, batch applications means user non-interactive applications. User non-interactive. User non-interactive applications. Either here user is no way required. Here, user is no way required. Railway ticketing PNR status. Currently, your waiting state is 200. After one hour, it is 150. Tomorrow morning, it is 100. Tomorrow evening, it got confirmed. Means it is a user is nowhere required here. It, it happens in the background, right? It happens in the background in an automated fashion. User non interactive applications here, user is nowhere required. Railway ticketing, PNR status, otherwise, uh, generating credit card statements, generating credit card statements for millions of customers. Generating credit card statements for millions, millions of customers, right? So here user is nowhere required. A phone bill statement for millions of customers. For all this, user is nowhere required. So Hadoop is for batch applications, not for online applications, right? Drawbacks with the current databases. Drawbacks with the current databases. A limited storage. GBs or in TBs, no parallel processing in most of the databases. If volume increases, speed decreases. Observe these queries, right? If volume increasing, speed decreasing. Observe these three queries. Yes. Which total amount from sales one? Total amount from sales two. Total amount from sales three. First one has got ten records. It has one lakh. It has got one crore. Query to query, right? Query to query as data increasing. So speed decreasing, right? Which one takes more time? Which one which one will be taking less time, right? Value increases, speed decreases. Among these three queries, which one executes faster? First query, right? Second query, yes, compared to the third one, right? Query to query, volume increasing, speed decreases. Right? I'm talking. I'm talking about the PNR status. PNR status, right? Yes, sir, PNR status. Per... We train number. We have to deny that also. PNR also. PNR status means see most of these. Of... The most of these financial applications and banking applications are batch applications. They are batch applications. There goes in the background. They'll be running right. 
most of the financial applications are bank applications, right? So they are batch. If okay, the volume increases, speed decreases. If complexity increases, for, for example, credit card statements generation. User has nothing to do in that. In the statement generations for millions of customers. Phone bill statements for millions of customers. If complexity increases, speed decreases. Complexity means query to query if the complexity increases. Here if you observe, select sum of amount, average amount, standard deviation of amount. First one, first statement executes faster, right? Because only one step process sum of amount. But is average amount is a two step process for sum to be calculated. Next, average to be calculated as compared to the first one. Second one takes more time. As compared with the second, third one, standard deviation. Lot of internal processing is required for performing standard deviation. So query to query, even if the complexity increasing, speed decreasing. Major drawback with the databases is it can handle <clears throat> only structured data. It can handle only structured data. <clears throat> Hadoop advantages, right? Unlimited data storage. Okay, before I go with Hadoop advantages, you need to know something about this Hadoop architecture. Hadoop doesn't follow. Client server architecture. Hadoop doesn't follow client server architecture. Hadoop doesn't follow client server architecture. Hadoop follows what architecture? Master slave architecture. Hadoop follows single master and multiple slave architecture. Master slave architecture. Single master and multiple slaves. Observe this. Hadoop follows master slave architecture. Single master, multiple slaves. S one, S two. S3, slave 1, slave 2, and slave 3. Slave nodes. Master nodes and slave nodes. Master and S1, S2, S3. Single master and multiple slaves. In Hadoop, for example, there is a file. In databases, data is stored in the form of tables. In Hadoop, data is stored in the form of files. F1.txt. Assume each system capacity 1 TB, 1 TB, 1 TB. So this F1.txt file is 2 TB. This 2 TB file cannot fit, cannot be accommodated in any of this, right? Because their capacity 1 TB, 1 TB, but this file capacity 2 TB. So what, how Hadoop is going to store means it divides this into multiple partitions.
understand here this 2tb file cannot be fit in any of the systems s1 s2 s3 so it will be divided into smaller part each part each part will be stored across multiple systems each part stored across multiple systems and are processed by multiple systems parallelly you see two advantages here parallel processing you can see two advantages parallel processing is the one distributed storage distributed storage and parallel processing so data is divided into multiple parts stored across distributed across multiple systems processed by multiple systems parallelly right So this is this entire thing we call it as a cluster. This entire thing we are going to call it as a cluster. We can have any number of clusters. We can have any number of. What is a cluster? Cluster means group of nodes. So group of nodes means CPU. Group of nodes CPUs connected in a network. There are two types of nodes. <clears throat> master node or slave node within the master node we have got a name node in Hadoop terminology right name node here within the slave node data node of nodes connected network is a cluster there are two types of nodes master node and slave node within this so here master node responsibilities task assignment assigning tasks to the slaves assigning tasks to the slaves load balancing So balancing balancing the load between the slaves. Fault tolerance. Fault tolerance means here observe this. Observe this diagram. If multiple, this is a T1 task. This T2 task, this is T3 task. T1 task is for executing this B1. T1 task is for executing T2 for this slave 2, T3 for slave 2. 
three tasks are executing parallelly. Three tasks are executed parallelly. Suddenly, if any one slave goes down, say this is a machine, S2 goes down, then you see two things. Okay. The task of it will be assigned to any of the other slave so that the task or job won't be failed. Whenever multiple tasks are executed by multiple thieves simultaneously, suddenly if any any particular slave goes down, then the task of it will be assigned to any of the other slave. This is called fault tolerance. And health monitoring. Master node assigning any task to the slave first. It checks. Already we have given health monitoring. Okay. Now slave node responsibilities, two responsibilities. Can anyone say what are the slave node responsibility? Hmm. Tuning data, secondly, processing data. Slave node responsibility for storing data and for processing data. Now, based on this, right, based on this, we see the advantages of Hadoop, right? Yes. Unlimited data storage. Unlimited data storage is possible in Hadoop because of a feature, because of a feature. Because of feature horizontally unlimited scalability. Unlimited data, unlimited data storage is possible because of feature horizontally unlimited scalability. Horizontally unlimited scalable. Horizontally unlimited number of slaves can be added. If you're running a business, for example, if you're running a business with a very less number of slaves, assume 10 slaves. S1, S2. For example, if you're running a small business, small organization, right? Okay. But if your business has increased, your branches have increased, your customers have increased, you cannot go with the same number of systems right horizontally will be keep on increasing keep on increasing okay so if a data increased by 100 times if customer in increased by 1000 times we cannot go with the same number of systems right more number of so horizontally unlimited scalability very high speed processing because of Parallel processing because of parallel processing. Very high speed processing because of parallel processing. How to perform parallel processing? Hence. Non-parallel and parallel. 
I'll give a label example. One per person preparing one item takes one minute. The same one person preparing 10 items. The same person preparing 100 items takes 100 minutes. For 1,000 items, 1,000 minutes. But in the case of parallel, 10, one item or 10 items takes one minute only, right? One minute, one minute, one minute. For one, one item also one minute, 100 items also one minute. 1000 items also one minute here observe carefully 10 persons working parallelly 10 sorry here 10 persons working parallelly preparing 10 items takes 10 minutes here 100 people working parallelly preparing 100 items one minute only but here we have said persons but in our terminology systems Unlimited data storage, very high speed processing can handle all varieties of data, structured data, semi-structured data, and unstructured data in commodity hardware. Hadoop can run on any operating system. It's an open source, no licensing required. That's why it's cost cutting. So here, open source, no licensing is required. So these are the main advantages in that first two unlimited data storage, very high speed parallel processing. I've got some very right. Why databases like Oracle won't support why databases like why databases like database like Oracle won't support unlimited storage? In real time, okay. So here I'm taking databases. Databases and max limit on the number of slaves max limit on the number of slaves even in the real time even databases like oracle can go and have multiple systems so maximum it can go oracle right first is oracle For what I kill, right? 256 max limit on the number of slaves. 256 nodes. Nodes means systems. Maximum it can go with 256. My square with max of 54 nodes. Supports maximum 256. 
nodes. MySQL, MySQL Express. Take any other like SQL Server. Maximum of 256 nodes. Even if Oracle is supporting 256 nodes, if 256 nodes given, if all the 256 nodes gets filled, it cannot support data further. And uh, just like a, a labor example, right? If just like a mobile phone, if you have given 64 GB internal storage, if all the 64 GB internal storage is filled, then the system may degrade. That is, Oracle may degrade. It cannot, sometimes it won't even open. And uh, if I go with, uh, if there are some specialized databases used for data warehouse like that. Terra data. It can go with 512 nodes, 512 CPUs. Netija. It supports nearly 512 nodes. 512, sorry, it's 512. It is also 512 nodes. 512 nodes are CPUs. Vertica. This is also specialized database used for data warehouse. It is also supporting 512 nodes are CPUs. But none of these databases are specialized databases. They are not supporting unlimited storage. But there is no limit. But there is no limit on the number of slaves that Hadoop can have. So Hadoop horizontally unlimited. Scalability, horizontally unlimited number of slaves can be added. Yahoo and first time implemented Hadoop. When first time implemented Hadoop went with Facebook when first time implemented Hadoop. Facebook when first time implemented Hadoop, right? We went with the 8,000 subs. Okay. Yahoo and first time implemented Hadoop went with 4,000. Currently, Yahoo going with. Currently, Yahoo going with 
8,000 slaves. Now, currently Facebook, previously Facebook when first time introduced, it was using Hadoop with 8,000 slaves currently. Forty two thousand slaves. So, Arup, there is no limit on the number of slaves, and horizontally unlimited number of slaves can be added. So, Arup is proving the market storage point of view and processing point of view. Processing point of view, right? As I said, yes. <clears throat> Yahoo tested, as I said, Yahoo has tested with the table, right? 100 TB consisting of 1024 columns. Task is sorting based on 16 columns from it. Oracle has taken nearly 3.5 days. MySQL has taken 6 days. Jira data 4.5 hours. Nadija 3 hours. Hadoop 4.2. Hours, right? It has taken just 4.2 hours. So that is why very high speed, right? Where this have taken days and hours of time, it has just taken minutes of time to process this. This is what Hadoop is proven in the market, storage point of view, processing point of view with a very high rate of speed, right? And also for storage point of view, unlimited data storage. As I was briefing you about what is Apache Spark, why PySpark, need for PySpark, real life usage of PySpark, right? Yes. So, so why we need to go for PySpark? Spark is an open source distributed cluster computing framework with introduced by Apache Software Foundation. So Spark is an engine for data analysis, processing and computation. Why PySpark means? It is a Python API to use Spark. So PySpark is the lightning fast technology. PySpark is the lightning fast technology that is designed for fast computation and real life usage real life okay and the need for PySpark right so large amount of data is getting generated both through offline and through online right we need to have the data which is generated will have unknown corrections market trends customer preferences etc right yes So if you want to, if you want to perform, there is some more efficient tools to perform different types of operations on big data. So, so PySpark is a flexible tool, scalable and flexible tool to crack big data and gain benefit from it. So combining PySpark, Python and Spark is the very efficient way for the world of big data, right? That's why Apache Spark came up with a tool called PySpark. Python API to use Spark. Okay. Hadoop scope and okay, Hadoop advantages I discussed. And here I was talking about Spark, right?
So real life usage of five spark in real life way it is used means sparks real time processing systems, banks and other financial systems. They are used, they're using spark to retrieve the customer social media profile and to analyze and gain useful insights which can help in taking the right decisions, right? Yes. Also used for fraud, fraud detection and also for healthcare. Apache Spark used to analyze the patient's records along with the previous reports. Yes, entertainment industry, right? Even uh, the popular OTT platform like Netflix using uh, the Spark, right? For online movies or web series. And even for e-commerce, e uh, websites like Flipkart, Amazon, all these, they are using uh, e they all are using right the spark for advertising even alibaba other things there enhancing experience that optimizes the overall performance right yes okay fine so everything in brief so i was discussing about this big data so two types of applications drawbacks to the current databases how to follows client server mass node responsibility slave node responsibility hadoop advantages why database is like oracle won't support unlimited storage there's no limit on the number of storage that we have in hadoop right it can go with any number of slaves it's proven in the processing point of view it is proven in the storage point of view right check this course content once right in brief we'll be discussing about this Big data, need for Hadoop sources, compassion with other technologies, challenges, storage, processing, RTBMS, and advantages of Hadoop, Hadoop ecosystem, Hadoop for distributed file system. Yes. HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system, features of HDFS, name node, data node, blocks, configuring it, and HDFS architecture. A name node, data node, secondary node, node, and for processing, we have got job tracker, task tracker. Configuring block size, metadata management, storage and processing, and map reduce. Map reduce is a parallel execution model used a lot in previously, right? But now it is outdated. Scoop for SQL and Hadoop, right? For import or export operations. Exporting data, importing data, yarn, et cetera, the resource negotiator, right? Yarn, yarn components, how the yarn processing is going to happen, right? No SQL, one well, no, no SQL database like HBase. And Hive is one of the important components, right? Mostly used in each and every project, right? Okay. Hive. High query language, loading the data, internal tables, working with XML data, and working with JSON data, URL and web block data, hives, multi tables, inserting UDF, UDF, UDTF, partitions, non partitions. And uh, my major discussion will be on PySpark. PySpark, uh, Spark session, context, RTD, parallelizers, repartitioning, broadcast variables, accumulators. Operations and RTD, RTD actions and transformations, steps in RTD computations, right? Yes, as I click draw, persistence options, memory only, memory underscore SCR only, disk only, disk underscore price per core computations, groupings and aggregations, various inbuilt actions and transformations, price per SQL data frame. So we have got different data frame API, like creating a data frame, converting RTD to data frame. Structure type and structure field, row class. Row class, column class, select, collect with column, column be named, order by, sort, group by, union, union all, union by name, map, flat map for each. So all this, right? We no need to write code here. Just we have got inbuilt function, all this. And the spice park, SQL functions, aggregate functions, window functions. JSON functions, read and write JSON file. PySpark built in functions, when EXPR, lit split, with many working examples, overlay, two timestamp, two date, date difference, 
array contains array select list color set yes my spark external sources working with the sql statements spark and hive integration spark and mysql integration working with json transformations and actions narrow and wide transformations additional adding of new columns dropping of columns handling nulls deployment modes and PySpark application right and PySpark streaming concepts integration with kafka and PySpark ml yes <clears throat> even uh, you will be given the knowledge of python not an overview in brief in depth the knowledge of this python will be provided both core and advanced basics of python features applications advantages versions flavors right python operations python mode of execution interactive mode batch mode ators ids data types constants variables input output statements escape sequences strings operators in python python ids just now we have discussed pycharm id professional uh, working with pycharm anaconda distribution VS Code, Spire ID, all these things, right? Basic Python like flow control statements, looping statements, strings, collections, list, tuples, sets, fun functions, dictionaries, object or functions in Python, different categories, different types, different arguments, default, non default, keyword, non keyword, right? Variables, length arguments. Call by value and call by reference, Paul, local and global variables, recursive functions, Boolean functions, right? And modules in functions. Functions means uh, lambda functions, filter function, map function, modules in Python, different ways of importing, renaming, reloading, right? Packages in Python, errors and exceptions. File handling, RP wanted comp concepts, regular expressions, database access, Python data and time, general concepts, general concepts like Python generator, decorator, closers, Excel workbook, data analytics, introduction to data science, Pandas model in brief, NumPy model in brief, and Matplotlib in brief. So these are the things I'll be discussing in brief. So it's um, Hadoop. We will be discussing four things here: Hadoop, PySpark, Linux, Python. PySpark, Hadoop, PySpark, Linux takes twelve weekends. Fifteen thousand is a course fee, but uh, Python also you'll be getting free. If you have anyone, if you have already paid for Python, that will be deducted from this and the remaining you need to pay, right? You can just check with this uh, chart message, right? A big chart message is given with the course content, previous demo videos link. If you have any concerns, contact with this number 720-721-2427, right? Can you see? The video demo video in this Hadoop PySpark Linux Python. Okay, fine. So from next week onwards, we'll be starting with the actual thing. I said the timing of this batch will be from seven to nine, right? Evening. So in the next week, the link will be changing. You are supposed to enroll for this course to get the new link. And next Saturday, uh, so next onwards, next Saturday onwards, you'll be getting the videos to your Google Drive if you have enrolled. And uh, clear notes to your mail IDs of assignments and tasks. So check this, right? What are the things? Live recorded sessions, soft copy of the class notes, assignments and tasks, software, WhatsApp group, and previously asked interview questions. Any queries you have got, anyone? Hello? 
sir like this is satya is this recommended to go this course if i want to become a data engineer mm. yes in the total hadoop is covered and uh, pyspark is covered right yeah uh, actually i want to go with like sql pl sql hadoop and pyspark actually here the, it covers those things that's why like uh, how well and uh, like my question is like uh, whether these topics will be covered when they are going with uh, cloud uh, services like azure or like azure data engineering or gcp data engineering if i take those courses it will be covered or uh, separately i need to take this course in uh, data engineering concepts right you need to specifically check whether they'll be covering pyspark or not okay so in all that most of the training sessions they'll be not covering it even if they cover they'll give just like uh, they won't go in brief in depth of it because here for pyspark uh, we are spending two months for pyspark one month for hadoop right yes yes yeah. in brief in depth you can see the course content only on pyspark the course content in brief in pyspark right check that uh, demand for pyspark in the market especially very high speed and even if you check right mm -hmm. the salary package of pyspark 1.5 times more than the other technologies pyspark okay. has got great demand in today's market if you have got good command definitely you can go to the job right yeah even my thing is like my worry is like that if i directly step into that uh, cloud world i miss the basics so if i know the so this, pyspark uh, my... this, this thing so uh, total from basic on basic to advanced level everything will be covered here about okay. uh, Hadoop, Papai, Spark, everything, right? With, uh, uh, even, uh, so the prerequisites for uh, this is SQL, basic SQL, basic Linux, basic Python. So Linux and Python I'm covering in this basic SQL. You need to have the idea of basic SQL. So you can go through this, right? Yes. And Python, uh, like uh, there is a, from Monday onwards, uh, there will be batch, right? From tomorrow 8. Uh, apart from that session, is there any other sessions you are teaching, sir? So evenings also batch is uh, available. Okay. At what time, sir? So recently, a batch was started in the last week, uh, four days ago, okay. at uh, 7 p.m. in the evening. Okay. So I can join that as well, right? Instead of this yes. morning class. Yeah. Morning, evening batch is available. That is available, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the information. Okay. Fine. So if I'm done with the query, so just to get enrolled. Uh, for the next uh, next week onwards, right? We'll be starting with the actual things, right? Fine. So if I'm done with the queries, if there are no other queries, I will sign off for now. Meet you in the next class in the next week, right? Yes. Thank you all for your time. Thank you.